Hello, what's going on guys? It is Specimen here. I've just woken up. Before I start my stream, I'm posting this YouTube video. So when it goes live, there's a good chance I will be streaming. So come check me out, come say hello. Building a Blue Stripes Commando deck today and rather than showing you a full completed list straight away and talking through it, I'm going to build it piece by piece and sort of explain each decision. I'm just waking up as well so my uh, speech might be slightly worse than normal which is saying something. So we've got the Blue Stripes Commandos which are summoning all copies of this unit from your deck to this row uh, when you use the order and we're using the Inspired inspired zeal leader ability which is going to give it a zeal and boost it by one so it means you can play a blue stripes down on the deck you can use your leader ability on it and they're all going to come out from your deck round three because you make extra copies with a blue stripe scout which makes a base copy of this unit and puts it at the bottom of your deck and of course you're then going to pull that out with this blue stripes commander i feel like my speech is terrible but i'm going to carry on so obviously the first part of a Blue Stripes Commando deck is going to be any card that synergizes with Blue Stripes Commandos. Roach Merciless, if you damage the unit by two and kill it, you're going to spawn another Blue Stripes Commando, uh, which is obviously spawning another Blue Stripes. It's very similar to Ceres, but you can also use this for some extra tempo in round one or some extra tempo in round three, which is really nice. Rather than just playing a Blue Stripes from hand, uh, you play a, essentially a four point body plus uh, two damage which is obviously adding six tempo on so burden roach is a nice way and the other cards are pavetta which is going to put you, all your blue stripes commandos you make round one back into your deck for that round three and i am using reinforcements now i have seen a couple of lists i know spear uploaded a blue stripes deck which i'll link in the description if you want to see a different take on it which was not using reinforcements but my personal belief is this card is eight tempo in round one and it's for carryover, so I feel like it's worth using for just six provisions. There is a reason it's not as good, and that's because you can overfill your row at times because you are also playing Draug. So obviously, this many humans all going into the same row means Draug is just going to get a lot of value. But a lot of the time, you're going to have your two commanders from the start. You're going to copy two here, which is four. You're going to have a fifth from reinforcements and a sixth from Roach. Which means when you put Draug in the row, there's only room for one Revenant to spawn in. So you're not maybe maximizing your Draug row. But equally, you are still getting seven damage off of that Draug anyway. So good chance they're going to want to try and kill uh, one of your Revenants anyway. So I feel like it's worth using the reinforcements. It's not every game you're going to call all these commandos in. I just feel like the extra tempo and the fact it gets carryover uh, is just worth it for six provisions. So we are using Draug. That's pretty much the main Blue Stripes package. But the reason this deck is so good now compared to before is for some thinning reasons uh, and some consistency. I'm going to throw Selkirk in there now as well. Reason being, Selkirk is pretty much an auto include in the Inspired Zeal decks. He's very similar to Prince Einsis, um, who is dueling a unit, um, but he doesn't have that formation where you can use him in the front and boost him up. So that's why Einsis is much more popular. Selkirk is only uh, an order, but you can give him a Zeal and then he's going to be a 6 strength dual card which is pretty damn valuable also a few ways of buffing him up to make him slightly better but the reason this deck is feeling a lot better now is for two reasons uh, assault and on your mancy assault of course just one of the best cards of this expansion um being able to play any northern realms unit nine provisions or low is great but also that boost on them is fantastic so uh it, you could search for a blue stripe scout and it's going to come in at nine points because it's four provisions which buffs it by five off assault which just adds to your tempo round one but also your consistency so it's just quite unbelievably good in this deck similarly an aeromancy is playing any card from your deck so you can search for that drag in round three but more likely you're going to search for maybe even your assault you might even search for your reinforcements or a blue stripe scout just helps the consistency dramatically of this deck actually i would say your main target for an aeromancy if you don't have it already is actually your assault which seems like that's weird right you're tutoring a tutor but ultimately um both these cards are going to come back into your hand for round two or round three and what more do you really need right they can play any card from your deck in aeromancy so it's the best card in your hand at all times and um well essentially and assault is giving any of your bronze cards that you're going to play anyway that nice buff which is just really helpful so these cards are just absolutely fantastic in shoe-ins the next shoe i'd say for pretty much any northern realms deck is going to be your bloody baron particularly with great swords seeming like they're on ladder all the time at the moment bloody baron having that reset is just incredibly important obviously against monsters ozreal as well um Scoritel, lots of decks go super tall 
so bloody barren is pretty much a necessity so i'd say so far this is pretty much everything that is going to be a shoe in there is an argument you could not use reinforcements but apart from that everything is guaranteed now for me personally i feel like you just use john natalis i'm using the reinforcements assault round one i feel like is just the crucial thing at winning the game because it gives you that extra five tempo on your scout but also it just helps that consistency of guaranteeing to pull whatever cards you need in round one. Whether it's your commando, your scout or your reinforcements, um, Assault is going to be able to, to get that. And John Natalis, of course, is going to be able to play your Assault. Having uh, reinforcements of an option is John is really nice as well. And for me personally, I love a couple of oils in this meta. So many decks have like five strength cards that you just want to get rid of. Syndicate's got Fallen Knight. You've got Hammer Dryads and Scoriatel. Um... Even if they start playing Johnny, you've got Johnny. Lots of just five uh, strength cards you want to get rid of for sure. And running two Boiling Oils for me is just makes a lot of sense when John Natalis is such a good tutor card. Again, these are probably the, the three or four cards you could consider getting rid of. John, Reinforcements and Oils. But for me, consistency is key. And actually having these, um, these Oils is never a bad thing for five provisions. But you might end up cutting these cards and going for like a Falibor which, spoiler alert, I've decided not to include in this list, which is rather controversial. I think next up, the best place to go is your four provision cards, because you're going to stuff a lot of these in. For me, it's Maulers. Uh, for the damage, is always nice. Also, helping line up that Roach Merciless Death Blow is really good, so you don't have to use a leader charge on Roach. Um, ballistas are always good, similar to Roach, uh, lining up those um, that Death Blow, but also just for a little bit of extra removal. If you've got a six strength unit, uh, or seven strength unit and you've got these orders on the board the boiling will take care of it which is really nice uh, i'm also using the well I'll find it the crack cutthroat and the royal guards royal guards have a nice bit of synergy with Selkirk. they're proactive as are the cutthroats uh, and just seem to make a lot of sense now there is one other card that is a shoe in as well that i've not touched on yet and that's voimir voimir just seems like probably the best northern realms card from the last few months obviously visigard works really well with him who we're not using but you've got all these blue stripes, so Voimir onto seven blue stripes would play for 12 points. Also, um, after you Draug as well, all your revenants are a really nice target. So Voimir is just never bad. And what this leaves us with is a bit of an awkward six provision slot. Now, this is why Boiling Oars, um, John Natalis reinforcements, you could kick. You could go to some more four provision cards, maybe like Adepts or um, something along those lines. But there's quite a lot of good options in it for provisions that you might want to go for. And then you might go for like a Falibor. But for me, I still don't really hate at all. Just throwing a Sabrina in there. In round three, we're playing Draug. And we're going to have all those Revenant pings. So Sabrina just sort of plays like a Lacerate in that sense. Uh, for just six provisions. I think Sabrina's a really solid option. She's going to be a card you're going to mulligan in round one. Uh, probably in round two as well. But in that round three, if you're playing against a deck that's going wide. Which, you know, obviously Great Swords is an example of a deck that does not go that wide. But pretty much all the other decks do. Um, yeah. It's just a nice card to have. And, and she's sort of an OG of this channel. Um, so it's always nice to include Sabrina. This is my first game of the day. I only played one game yesterday, which is the Squirtel deck guide you saw. So is it Great Swords? It is. So I'm going to be honest. I don't know how this is going to go. Um, we'll see. I've not played much. I'm, I'm trying to fit this uh, deck guide in before I start streaming. Um... So I've got an early upload and then I'll try and upload later on in the evening as well. So I've obviously got the Echo cards, which is great. Uh, I've got the Assault as well, which can call in. I'll move over here. I've got the Assault, which can call in um, Commandos. I've got this, which could call in Roach. So the first point, of course, is just going to be to get rid of Sabrina. She is a round three card. And there's no worries. We're happy with all these other cards in my hand round one, right? We do find a Commando, which is pretty damn good. Um, I suppose there is a consideration to just call Roach in instead. Um... I'm, going to, I'm just going to call Roach and seeing as I've got an Aeromancy. And I guess I could keep this hand. Maybe we'll kick Voimir. I think Voimir is more of a round three card too. Um, and I am just going to lead in with, I believe, a Mauler to just put a little bit of pressure on him. So, obviously calling in the um, Commando from Assault with this hand is pretty reasonable because I'm going to miss out on my reinforcements if I do that. But I could call him reinforcements in fact from um, my Neuromancy, right so I could call in the commando from this which puts it at six sorry which puts it in at uh, seven <laughs> maths and then I could call reinforcements in for a Neuromancy, or I could even call John in right 
gone into reinforcements which were within my deck so i think i'm going to start with a little bit of damage on the board just to threaten him a little bit and then we'll start the commandos you're normally going to want to play commandos in the back row because your scouts go in the front uh also cards like selkirk are row locked to the front john the Talis as well uh baron as well a lot of the time you're going to want to play in the front row so normally keep these to the back so i have got the option to boiling all this um this is the problem, obviously, with Skellige. They've just got lots of these damage cards, which just seem to get incredible value, and they're very difficult to actually kill. Cards are incredibly good. I think I'm kind of left with little choice but to leave this, really. I think there's better targets for oils. Um, maybe I'll just float out a little uh, a little Royal Guard so I could buff this up. If it's looking a little bit hairy. And this is why Skellige feels so good at the moment. Obviously, they've got that great sword uh, of... If you win round one, you probably win the game because they have last say. But they've got all these amazing bronze cards now. They take out my Royal Guard with his Stunning Blow. Obviously, my um, my Mauler's getting damaged quite a bit here. I've already made the decision to uh, not go for this. So I'm going to play my Karak Cut Threat in the back. And this is the problem. You can't actually kill this with two damage, right? It's a really great card. Uh, not many cards are going to do three damage apart from your cards like oils, which you normally want to save for better cards. And for just five provisions, just very, very solid. And um, Skellige's got lots of those cards, which is why it's so popular. So I probably could have seen that coming. Has, honestly, I've not been playing too much, unfortunately, in the last few days. We're going to take the oil on the Drummond here, and then I'll take the Bleeding on the Abomination. But not really too much else I could have done differently there with the Mauler. There was obviously no point of hitting the uh, this before. But this is an example of something you'd probably maybe rather kill. But obviously getting the uh, Urker out is pretty good. Um, I could hit a Ballista down here. But I'm not actually going to be able to kill this right. So I think I could obviously call John the Talos and then kill this with an Oil. Oil is always good. I think it's just time to call in my... And it's going to come in at 6 points now, true. This would come in at 6 points. Comes in at 7, which would put it in range of decoction, which is rather scary, honestly. Mm. So maybe I should have called this in just before he had a chance to put a boat down. Because this could now be decoctioned. So we're kind of feeling a little bit a little bit worried here that this might get destroyed. We'll see though. Luckily, it's not destroyed. Now, obviously, I would like to call in my Blue Stripe Scout and start copying this. But equally, this Great Sword is pretty threatening. And I can remove it with a um, an Eromancy John the Talis Echo uh, Boiling Oil. So, it means I'm going to miss out on the reinforcements. But I think that's fine. Um... It's going to come in at 5 power. We do kill it. I'm going to leave this floating here. Reason being is my next one's going to come in at 4 power. And I've not managed to copy any yet. He could pass here, honestly. And I've, I've really not achieved my um, my win condition of buffing up commandos. But he decides to keep going. Obviously, he's got that res and the greatsword. I've never been a big fan of greatsword decks, I must admit. Um... I think you, you can probably tell I'm still feeling quite the same, even even though I've not even been playing too much this uh, last couple of days, that Skelliger seems like it's all over the gaff. I won't be posting a Great Swords deck. It does not interest me playing it in the slightest. If you do want to go see a Great Swords deck, there will be other people playing it. Um, not for me, man. I've never been a big fan of Great Swords, and uh, particularly when they're Tier 1, it just makes it even more boring, I think. So, I could obviously pass here, but I think I'm just going to try and call this in. It's a... I mean, maybe I'm just passing, honestly. I probably don't get my card advantage back unless I pass now. I really didn't do a great job of making more commandos, but... And he's going to have last say. But what can you really do, man? What can you do? I guess you could make an argument his graveyard's not really very good at the moment. So it's actually quite a good pass. He's most likely... And this is an, another, another problem with Skelliger, not to be like bashing Skelliger, but their, their leader ability is the best in the game, right? Because they could commit a really good gold card here. Such as Wild Boar. And then just replay it. So it's not even... 
Like, it's not even a good thing, right? So I just had to pass there, unfortunately. You're not punished for committing, like, a 12 provision card. It's actually a good thing to commit it, because then you can res it. And play it in multiple rounds. So obviously Assault and a Neuromancy coming straight back into my deck. I would expect him to pass, um, and the, I guess the Blue Strap Scout is a fine card to just dump down. We could keep it for the next round as well for another Draug target. I guess it's an 8 point play, right? Maybe we could have kept this. You could obviously use Pavetta here, just risk your Mulligans being slightly bad, but I think with Assault and with the Neuromancy, you're pretty fine with that, because I can. it's only Baron and Roach I'm looking for. I am going to risk the mulligan. Um, I'm going to kick the, the scout here. So the decision now is if I put the ballista down or if it's Pavetta. Pavetta obviously would put one, two, three commandos back in my deck. Um, and make my mulligans slightly awkward. But you could also make an argument. The most po This is the safer option to play this. But the most points... In round three would be to put Pavetta down and to still be able to mulligan this away without hitting any commandos. So, essentially, am I going to win this round three? I feel like I'm probably not. So I think I need to play to my win condition, which is be able to mulligan this away, draw all my golds, and don't brick my hand. Does that make sense? I could play it safe, but I feel like I'm kind of up against it, against great swords. So we just don't want to see any commandos come into this hand straight away. We'd like to see Baron or Roach. There we go. Okay. Hey. Um, Royal Guard's really good because it gives you extra Selkirk value. Um, Maulers and Ballistas are also half decent. I think Ballistas are a little bit better. Bit of extra damage. Find a Blue Stripe Scout. We've not seen any commandos yet. I could call... Um, hmm. So this is probably my target for Assault. I could call Roach in off a Neuromancy. I think we, we stop here, really. I think we stop here. Um, and I'm just going to lead in with a Royal Guard, yeah. So we're going to play Voimir off Assault, which you're coming at 7 points. Um, and then we're going to play... Um, Bird and Roach from a Neuromancy here. So you can see the value of these two cards right pretty much straight away. So I'm going to go in with my Ballista here. Not going to buff this up. I'd rather buff Ro uh, Selkirk up in a bit, right? So a buff off, a buff onto Selkirk makes him 7, and you're going to use a leader. So that'll be an 8 point duel, which can deal with a lot of tool units. Hey, he's not playing around my Vernon Roach here, so let's call him in now. And we're going to Roach the back row. Now, you could make an argument this uh, Royal Guard is kind of messing me up a bit. And it is. But I guess it's always going to turn into a, a Revenant anyway. And we're going to use a Zeal on this. Drops a good one. Then I'll scout the, the front. We'll get another Commando in. And then I'll Draug. Now, you could also use your Last Inspired Zeal on a Baron in the back row, potentially. Also, it would give him Bleeding if I was to just give him a point buff. Uh, normally, it's just for Roach and for Commandos and for Selkirk, but we didn't need to use Roach here, so we've got a bit of flexibility. I mean, there is an argument to Selkirk and kill this. Um, we're expecting, obviously, Wild Boar, and this is going to get a lot of value against us, is the old Wild Boar of the Sea. There is an argument to just sell Kirk this now. But equally, I'd rather try and kill a greatsword. Um, we know he's only got one greatsword, though, and he can always res one. And then Wild Boar in the same turn, right? So I think I'm actually going to kill this. Why not? I'm not sure how much it's going to achieve, really, but it's fine. Okay, so I'm guessing I should have waited for Harold on reflection. I don't think he's got a bronze war in his graveyard, so he's had a bit of a stinker. Yeah, I guess in, in hindsight, Harold's a better target, right? 
probably. He's had a stinker though, this geezer, so we might have a chance here still. We're going to call in my scout. And we're just going to leave this uh, raw guard damage flowing. So you could make an argument the front row raw guard could have been better here. Because this is just dying to wild boar of the sea. So here's his great sword, which again, okay, I would have been able to kill with Selkirk, but then he just reses it with a Freya, I would assume. Maybe I've got that wrong. Is he calling Wild Boar in already? That seems incredibly premature. Giving me Baron value as well. So we are just going to Draug now. Um, I could, of course, call Voimir in, which might protect me from Hemdall. I guess I guess Voimir is kind of reasonable here, right? Because Hemdall's probably his next play. Which is most likely going to finish off a couple of commandos. I think if I Draug now, he Hemdles. Whereas if I do this, he won't Hemdle until I've Draugd. And even though I won't get the, the value off my armor, I'm pretty sure what happens if I, if I like I said, if I Draug, he Hemdles. And if I Voimir, he doesn't. Which means these will be in at two power. So even though I won't get the, the armor benefit, I don't think that protects me from Hemdle anyway. I'm going to Voimir first. Arguments to go in the back row potentially as well. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to do it, honestly. I, I think this stops him from Hemdling now. He's going to play a different card first. Um, and obviously the fact that he's got this great sword here just lets me put Baron in the front one. We will give Baron a one point buff, even though it doesn't achieve anything, really. It gives me one extra point on the bleed, so it plays for two points, the last leader charge. Oh wow, three. Almost. Almost had me there. So obviously, in Draug, this is not ideal having a full row, but equally this is still eight points of damage I'm getting. So it's not the end of the world. What I can do is I can reset the Greatsword and kill the Greatsword, right? Actually, the, it's only a one point leader in the end. So obviously we just got the death blow on the uh, on the great sword on the ship rather, which allowed me to just Vernon Roach and get everything going in nice and easily. He actually decides to kill a unit, which is good for us because it just gives us an extra weapon one in. Here comes the Baron. We'll give him the point buff because why not? I guess. And he rage quits because I could have killed the ba uh, killed the great sword and done this. So he played it pretty terribly, honestly. Uh, leader ability plus great short sword should have been his last play um, but you can definitely see the power of the deck right I mean I've not played that deck many times myself yet either so I'm certainly not playing it perfectly either we do need some practice just to show you if you're still watching the video uh, what you might like to do and bear in mind I'm probably streaming if this video has gone live just now I will probably be streaming so you could potentially kick John Natalis kick reinforcements kick Sabrina kick the oils but I think you can already see how good the auras were in that game, right? And you could fit Falibor in, or maybe Philippa. I think Falibor is more likely um, in terms of provisions. So if you go for Falibor, you could just throw a few more four provision cards in. Uh, Adepts are good cards, potentially. I don't like them as much with no reinforcements. Even like Centurion Knights and Brack Marines aren't bad. Um, I think the most likely ones you'd go for are Enchantresses. And then that leaves you with 11 provisions, so... Maybe a 7 and a 4. Maybe you could go for like an Eggmund or a Sheila. Or even like a War Chariot as well. Because you've got lots of soldiers. Um, I, I think Eggman's probably the most likely. And then you go for another 4. Like maybe a, a Quedwini Knight as an option off of your Assault for a, a big point slam. But personally, um, I do prefer not going for the Falibor. Because as good as Falibor is, you actually saw there. It's kind of nice to put Pavetta down in that round 2 if you lose round 1. And then just play safe with your mulligans. And then obviously there's going to be some times where you're a Neomancy's hitting like a bronze card. But it's at the end of the day, it's really not the end of the world, right? Um, it's really not the end of the world if you're a Neomancy's hitting hitting a, a bronze card. Because you're still going to get that value off at round one. And it does feel like a waste if you're a Neomancy into a bronze card. And it could be fallible. But I just think these boiling oils are too damn good not to use. And kind of similar with reinforcements. Like that just tempo round one. And obviously, John Natalis is just giving you that consistency of hitting that assault, which is your most important card. And um, similarly, a bit of Sabrina, I don't think it's ever a bad thing. And in, in a round three against decks that aren't Skelliger, uh, it's going to come up really clutch because lots of decks do go wide. 
anyway i hope you enjoyed the video um i'm aiming to be posting two videos a day is my objective we'll see if i can stick to that i am back at work which is why there was not as many videos in the past couple of days but um i do stream most mornings from around 8 a.m bst so if you are interested come see me over there because uh yeah we're gonna plan lots of things hopefully my plan for today on the stream is play some syndicate um gonna play some more commandos but i'm playing around with syndicate playing um igor for extra fallen knights moving away from portal essentially i'll talk more in the video later but portal just doesn't seem like it's enough tempo this is my last attempt really at getting this deck to work but fallen knights are so good um igor makes a lot of sense because this card i played quite a bit last season or tried to and there wasn't really any great targets there were size electresses and cut up blackies but um on fallen knights it's just definitely worth it and you can do some cool things with igor like play a blind hypocrisy and heal him up and reuse his insanity so i think there's some potential in this deck uh it's definitely not going to be a gore deck um but we'll see how good it can be i think syndica um seeming like maybe the weakest faction scoretail is probably up there as well and also i'm going to be playing some scoretail non-devotion as well that's pretty much the plan northern realms today um some scoretail non-devotion and some syndica and depending how long the stream goes on for i'm sure there'll be some other things as well hope you enjoyed the commandos video stay tuned for more please subscribe if you have watched this far and you've not already nice one thank you so much for all the support i really appreciate it. enjoy the rest of your day sweet hope to see you on the stream bye